Now, a couple of videos ago, I mentioned my upcoming trip to the Great Smoky Mountains, and I got a lot of comments from y'all with the uh, best places to fish and maybe some patterns to try, so thank you all for that. And Tony mentioned the Yellow Sally hatch going on, and Charles said he had a lot of luck there last week, so I'm hoping they're gonna still be out next week when I get down there. So that's what I'm gonna be working on for my next couple of ties, some Yellow Sally dry flies. Now, no one mentioned what sizes the bugs are down there, so I'm gonna assume they're about the same as we have here in Maryland. No bigger than a size 12, and maybe as small as 14s and 16s. I mean, the Yellow Sally is a stonefly, but I doubt the ones in Tennessee and North Carolina are as big as the ones out west. But if any of y'all have any clue as to what sizes they are down there, please let me know in the comments. But unless I hear otherwise, I'm gonna just go with my default size 14s and 16s. So today's pattern, it's an egg laying female that I'm tying on a clink hammer hook. And I know clink hammer hooks are typically meant for emergers, but if you have some good quality dry fly hackle and you use a deer hair for a wing, the thing should still float, but with the back end just down there under the surface film. Now this is a pretty simple tie, and I guess we're gonna see how well it works in a couple of days. So there it is, my clink hammer yellow sally. Now this is a female, you see the red butt egg sac there. And I've been tying these in 14s and 16s today. This is a 14 barbless clink hammer hook. And I'm using white thread. Yellow would be fine. You see a lot of people use brown on these, but I'm using a light color thread because of the body I'm using. And I'll show you in just a second. But before we get to the body, let's put some wax on and then take a little bit of red wool. We're gonna dub an egg sac back here. Okay, when you get a little egg sac, go ahead and take your thread up to the front. We're gonna catch in our body. And the body on this, I'm using a UTC vinyl rib. This one's a yellow. Now, if you take a look at this, you can see it's a D rib. It's flat on one side and then rounded on the other. If you want the ribbed look with the round up, then just catch it in with the round side toward the hook. But honestly, I don't think this matters the slightest bit. I've tied them both ways today because I haven't been really paying that much attention to it. And I think they're gonna fish just the same. So let's catch this in way back here, really right up in that butt right there. So we don't want too much of a gap when we start wrapping our body. So go ahead and catch, or take your thread up to the front of that, and now just wrap this. And the first wrap, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll, you'll, you can see the the rounded section on top. Again, I really don't think it matters, so just do it however you'd like. And if you let it slip, just start over. Okay, when you get it up front, go ahead and catch it off. Now you might be thinking, I'm a little bit I've got it a little bit too far forward, and it is pretty far forward, but I'm doing that by design. Because where I'm gonna catch in my wing, I'm gonna catch it in right on top of this vinyl body here. And for the wing, it's a bleached deer body hair. I'm gonna put it in my stacker. And it's not a whole lot. I don't think this is what's gonna make the fly really float. It will a little bit because it's deer hair and it's pretty hollow. But why I'm catching it in on top of that body is I don't want it to flare too much. So I'm clockwise, spin my thread right there, and we're gonna catch it in right back here. It's gonna flare some, but we can take care of that. See, that's a little bit more than I want right there. And how we take care of that, just some medium wraps going back. And now when we get forward, we can put the tighter wraps again. So I've got a little flare, but I'm fine with that right there. Now let's trim off these excess butt ends up here. And this is really the only tricky part, just trying to prepare this section right here for wrapping the hackle. So you're gonna have a step down and it's gonna make it a little bit tricky. So just spin some thread wraps 
and try to build you a little smooth ramp right here. And for the hackle, I'm using a white dry fly hackle. And I'm undersizing it a little bit, but I'm gonna put a lot of wraps. This is really what's gonna make it float. And I don't want it to be a high floater. I want the butt, the back section of this thing to be down in the water showing that red um, egg sac. So go ahead and ramp that down. And we've got a little stem right here to take care of. Now it's a pretty big looking head right there, but we kind of needed to do that so that we can wrap this smoothly going down. And several wraps, you know, five wraps if you want, even more depending on the quality of your hackle here, but go ahead and take it up there to the eye. And now catch it off. And we're getting a little bit close to the eye, but I can still get my tippet through there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just pull this back a little bit and then make a little room for my whip finish here. So there we go. Now I've got a few fibers I might want to trim or, or singe off, but I can get my tippet through that eye right there. So I've got a decent fishable fly. I'm putting a drop of head cement on it and calling this one done. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.